Welcome to this live feed. Um, uh, we're, a, a number of us serve on the Select Committee on Multi-Employer Pensions, um, an issue that has uh, devastated so many North Dakota families and continues to create great uncertainty across the country for very many retirees who have worked hard their whole entire life, who have spent uh, their time and, and their efforts making America just one of the greatest countries in the world. And they did that with the promise of in their golden years they would have that security that they bargained for when they uh, made their contributions and when they negotiated their salaries and their contracts with their employers. Guess what? That dream is eroding that possibility of those golden years being enjoyed free of any economic worry, that is evaporating. And it's evaporating for a lot of reasons, but it is up to Congress to fix it. And we had a hearing today, it was named the stakeholder hearing. Um, unfortunately, there was only one person there who had any skin in this game. Um, that was unique, and that was Mr. Sterling, who uh, basically, uh, uh, Stribling, who basically um, uh, told his incredible story of working hard his whole entire life and now having his pension threatened. Um, I'm going to just kick this off and let other members of the committee uh, speak as to their concerns, but hopefully you'll get a, a better view of the human impact of this problem and why it is that we're fighting so hard to resolve this because it is part of the American dream. One thing I'll tell you is that you will hear people, whether it's in a political campaign, whether it's on the floor of the Senate or the House, saying, we're for the working people. We believe that if you work hard in America, you should get ahead and the system shouldn't be rigged against you. Guess what? This is a classic example where you can divide members of, of Congress between those people who actually believe those words and are working hard to fix it or those people who um, simply use that as a talking point and don't really work to make life better for working men and women. I always tell people I came from a working class home. My dad was a seasonal construction worker and my mom was a school cook. And we lived the American dream because we were able to get an education, able one day to um, really be in the halls of Congress thanks to the grace of God and the votes of my uh, constituents and a passion for making the world a better place. And and um, this is an issue I feel so strongly about. Yes, the economics and the numbers need to be looked at, but we need to lead with the moral imperative that working men and women should not bear the brunt of bad Wall Street decisions, should not bear the brunt of bad trustee decisions, and that we need to solve this problem, not just for the people who are retired, but for everyone who still is in a multi-employer pension system, would have loved to hear from them. For the employers who are still in those systems who are now threatened by the last man standing, would have loved today to hear from them. We didn't get that opportunity, and so we want to offer that opportunity right here on Facebook Live. So thank you so much for joining us, and I think uh, Representative Norcross is next. He's going to um, give it from his perspective. He has a similar background to mine. Um, I think you're a plumber, right? Electrician. Electrician. Oh, now I'm in big trouble. <laughs> but um, the, my friend, Congressman Norcross. First of all, thank you very much. That's uh, kind to invite me. But uh, as we like to say, there's 211 attorneys in Congress, but there's only one electrician. I went through a four-year apprenticeship program, and by way of what we do each and every day, I'm 39 years into a program that we're talking about today. That's a multi-employer and pension. But what does that mean to the average man or woman? That's a deferred dream. Wages that were earned by these hardworking men and women that were deferred for what we call the golden years. And that's so important because what we're facing, through no fault of their own, they earn the wages, they put them aside. The system is collapsing on itself because of a bad design. Nobody's fault. Bankruptcy by other companies, something they call last man standing. That company next door goes out of business and you have to pay for them. But what we're talking about is literally the collapse of the retirement system in America. They don't know the difference between a 401, a multi-employer, a single employer. All they know is they did what was right. They put this money aside and it's being lost. The employers who continue to employ that next generation of retirees who are contributing to the system face collapse also. Yeah, employees, employers, and most importantly, we in America face a very real possibility that the faith in a retirement system, no matter what kind, 
including Social Security, isn't going to be there. Can you imagine that? You work your whole life, you do what you're supposed to do, and nothing there at the end. And that's what we're here to fix. When those who've been devastated by horrible storms, whether it's Florida, Puerto Rico, or Texas, we're there for them, because that's what America does. It was no fault of their own. That storm came on them. Well, we have a storm in the pension system, and we as Americans have to come together. And what you're going to see are those very real stories who worked, played by all the rules, and now are facing a very unseen future. With that, I want to thank you for listening, and certainly the senator and those mine workers, those teamsters, those carpenters, everybody. We're all in this together, and we'll fix it together. Thank you. Hi, my name's Marion Tennant. I live in the great state of West Virginia. I have worked 40 years in the coal industry, and if they cut my pension, my life is devastated. My family's life is devastated. I was one of the first mine that I worked at that went through the bankruptcy. That had a great deal on the impact of our retirement. We're just needing help. That's all. We just ask for some help. We're not asking for a handout. My family cannot survive without my pension. That's the only thing I get. I retired early at 58 with 40 years of service. I am 44-year member in the United Mine Workers. And if you take half of a retiree's check, which are the average pension check for a United Mine Worker is less than $600. $300 won't go very far. Thank you. Yes, my, my name is Tony Codrick. I'm, a th I'm from Uniontown, Pennsylvania. I'm a third generation coal miner. I started in the coal mines in 1977, and I worked 36 years, and I got injured, and I had to retire because of my injury. So I've, I've been a United Mine Worker member since 41 years, and I really, we really need our pension. I mean, if we lost half of our pension be devastating we just want what's promised with us we don't want everybody keeps calling entitlement or whatever we just want what was promised to us and it's it's we're going to pay the loan back so hopefully like you said uh you know, the company i work for second company went bankrupt then they turned around and gave the ceo 13.8 million bonus to bankrupt the company then he's the ceo of the new company so they can have money for that, why couldn't they have money for our pensions? So, and I thank you very much for all your help, Senator. My name's Tim Cox. I'm from Morgantown, West Virginia. I started in the mines 18 years old in 1978. I was disabled, both shoulders, four surgeries in 2016. My pension's everything for mine and my family. I, I did my part 39 years. I think they owe me. Thank you very much. My name is Tony Roski. I'm from Masontown, Pennsylvania. I worked in the mines for 39 and a half years. I'm from a small community that depends on our pensions, our churches, our schools, our grocery stores. Every little store and thing in Masontown depends on our pensions. Hi, my name's David Van Sickle. I was a third generation coal miner. I put 40 years in the mines like my father before me. Uh, the pension to me and my family and the communities is, it, it's unreal how it helps. Uh, if I was to lose part of it, you know, I mean, you're talking about selling homes, filing bankruptcy. It would just not only devastate me, my family, and the community. I appreciate Senator Hottie Camp for everything she's done. She's taught notch. Thank you. I'm Bill Fisher. I hired in with Jim Walter Resources, number seven mine in 1980. And for the next uh, 10 years, I was excited and interested in what I was doing. 
knowing that I was going to be, my pension was going to be vested in 10 years. The later, 20 years later, after many negotiations of contracts, I was able to retire from the mine with 30 years service and my pension. Six years later, they're threatening to take half my pension away. I'm a widow. I live on my own and I can't afford to give up any money that I worked hard for and I earned and I was promised. Thank you. My name is Delma Battle. I'm a third generation of miners. Uh, I worked at John Walter Resources for 35 years. I retired in 2015. I was told when I started that I was promised a pension and a health card for life. And that's why I'm here today looking for a health card. I have a 100-year-old mother who is so scared right now that they're going to take her pension. And that is not right. We want to be able to sleep at night and have a blessed day. Thank you. My name is Donnie Smith. I was employed with Jim Walsh Resources in 1980. I have almost 34 and a half years in the mine. When I retired, I look forward to getting a retirement for the rest of my life. I've had two knee replacements, so therefore, I really need my pension. Also, without my pension, my husband and I, whereas my husband has about 26 years in mind, taking away our benefits like that would devastate my household. So I'm asking to reserve my pensions. Thank you. My name is Deborah Lentz. I'm from Alabama. I'm a fifth generation coal miner. I had 35 years when I retired. I depend on my pension. But more than me, I have an 82 year old mom who depends on that pension. It's less than $300 now. So please help them work this out. My name is Jimmy Thomas. I started working in the mines in 1969, and uh, I was promised a pension and health care for life. So that's all I'm looking for is what I was promised and what I worked for. My name's Larry Spencer. I'm the vice president of District 20. Uh, I represent a lot of retirees. They're on the verge of uh, of losing their pension and uh, we, we've got thousands of people that depend on this and we are asking some for some help to try to keep these people's pension so they can keep buying groceries and, and the medicine that they need. Thank you. My name is Jack Palish. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I had 37 years in the Central States Pension Fund and we're here again because we are fighting for our lives. Uh, these pensions are the most important things uh, besides our families and our religion. So the most important things in our lives. We need these pensions. We depend on these pensions. We paid into these pensions our whole lives. And I'd like to say one other thing. Uh, for probably more than half of us with the coal miners and the team sure that are veterans. Uh, we did our part for our country. A lot of us came back to this country after we served in Vietnam. And a lot of us not only served our country, but we fought for our country. And uh, we think that we need a little bit of help from our government. We're not asking for a handout. We're not asking for a bailout. We're asking for a loan and a solution to this problem. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sherman Lehman-Tannen. I was a 28-year business agent and officer and executive officer of Teamsters Local 346 in Duluth, Minnesota. Uh, over the years since 1970 to 1994, I had represented over 1,000 persons who were participants in Central States Pension Fund. We stood before all those, per all the membership, 
every negotiation time and explain to them that it, that it was time that we take a uh, cut and put a bucket or, or a dollar or two into the pension fund because it was guaranteed by the Pen Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation and ERISA and uh, in the PBGC. Uh, what's really concerning to me is the fact that in 1991, I was representing uh, 16 states in the tank hall in Chicago uh, for the Central States Pension Fund, or excuse me, the Central States uh, Conference in, uh, uh, can I gotta cut that? Uh, I was a negotiator for the co uh, Central Conference of Teamsters, and we had over 1,000 drivers who who sacrificed three dollars an hour to stay in the pension fund in 1991. Little did we know that uh, we were not going to get the benefit guarantees that we had asked for. Um, it's without question the consent decree really uh, didn't do us any favors. Uh, that was put in place in 1982. However. Uh, if we'd have had that in place and it would have been managed properly, the administration and the U.S. government, we perhaps wouldn't be in this situation today. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm Sherrod Brown. I just came from co-chairing the, the pension committee. Um, and it's clear the work we have to do. I listened to a Teamster today, Mr. Kenny Stribling from Wisconsin. Uh, Mike Walden was sitting behind him. He's testified to our committee in Columbus when we did our joint our committee hearing at the State House in Columbus, the only field hearing. It is, it is so important that we deal with this. Um, Rita Lewis, whose husband, um, we named the bill after the Butch Lewis Act. Rita said, sometimes I, f I feel invisible around here. Well, it's up, to, it's up to Senator Heidkamp and to me and to these Teamster activists and mine worker activists to make sure that, that these retirees are not invisible. And that means, that means standing up as Senator Heidkamp and I and others are doing in fighting for these pensions to make sure that we honor the commitment. What people in this town don't understand so often is that what collective bargaining is all about. It's, about. it's about these Teamsters. Some of them are going to be speaking right after me from places like Fargo and places like and places in Ohio. Um, that what Washington under, always understand is, is, is workers give up pay at the bargaining table so they will have an economic, they will have a secure pension in the future. So those dollars can help them be secure in their retirement. So I ask you to come to, to, to go to JSCSMPP at finance.senate.gov and tell your story. JSCSMPP at finance.senate.gov. Tell, tell us your story. We, these stories are what makes this pension well, what's, what's going to help us win? Frankly, we would have, this would never have gotten this far if it weren't for workers and pensioners standing up in small businesses and telling their stories. So thank you for your activism and engagement. Hi, I'm Bob Berg. I'm a UPS retiree after 30 years, um, half of it in Fargo and half of it in Fergus Falls, Minnesota. Um, I think it's totally wrong that any of us would have to accept any kind of a cut at all. Uh, we paid into the system. We worked hard um, in Minnesota and North Dakota. We fought 30 below blizzards. We were out in the elements every day, um, not only risking our lives, but doing what we could to help other people out. Um, we're not asking for a bailout. We're asking uh, this committee to come up with a solution to protect our retirement. We had no control in what's happening to us and uh, we are really appreciative of Senator Heitkamp um, for all she has done for us. Uh, she has been with us since ground one, uh, the day one when we started this fight. Um, we're all worried about if we get cuts, we lose our retirement it will be a government bailout because I'll be on uh, government assistance. I'll be on food stamps. I'll be on housing, fuel assistance, because uh, I will not have any money to survive on. So uh, this is just wrong. I feel like we have done everything right. Um, it's very unfair. So thank you.
My name is John Saunders. I'm a 28-year Teamster member. I paid in, um, followed all the rules, uh, and now I'm facing a pension cut, and I just want to uh, know how am I going to keep my house? How am I going to replace any cars? How am I going to keep upkeep on my house? How am I going to uh, pay taxes? How can I support my church? How can I support local small businesses? Uh, every turn in the road is going to be drastically affected. And um, to use an analogy, um, I'm going to be drowning here pretty soon in debt, and I just want to know who will throw me a lifeline, who will rescue me from this problem that I face. Thank you, Senator Heitkamp, Senator Brown, and um, everyone in support of the Butch Lewis Act. My name's Ken Saunders, near Dayton, Ohio, 35-year Teamster. Currently, I'm a contributing member of society, pay taxes on the pension I receive. And if that is cut, I will uh, go from a contributing member to a receiving member, no longer paying money into the government and supporting my churches and my local community. But I will be uh, asking for bailouts from my community and my government. So if the pension is sustained, I will be able to continue being a uh, contributing member in my society and my country. Thank you. Hello, my name is Pete Susie. I'm a teamster for 30, 36 years. Uh, this pension means a lot. It means our life. How we're going to finish our golden years. We don't know what we're going to do. I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Dana Vargo. I'm from the. Oh, I represent the Ohio Canton Local 92's Retirees uh, Committee to Protect Pensions. I'm not a teamster myself but I'm here with my husband trying to save his pension. Um, you know, we've, we represent so many of the retirees and you know, a great percentage of them are veterans and they've, they've given already. They, they don't need to do this again. And you talked, you know, they, everyone says, oh, we need to get this fixed. But Central States has told us that we lose a thousand pensioners a month, a thousand. So when are they going to fix this? How many are going to die before they get this fixed? They don't know if the families are going to be taken care of. It, it's shameful, and they need to get this fixed. Thank you. My name is Don Vargo. I'm a 30-year Teamster. I did everything I was supposed to do. I went to work on time. I did what I was supposed to do. I ended up taking my accrual rate, went from 2% to 1%, and now they still want me to take a cut in my pension. When's enough enough? I can't afford to do that. I want to have a life with my wife and my grandchildren. I'm Al Stapleton, proud American, proud Teamster. Uh, I have 30, year, uh, 30 years in a pension fund. One month before I retired in 2003, my wife passed away. I have five children, nine grandchildren, and nine great-grandchildren. If this pension is allowed to go belly up, I will have to rely on my family for survival. This is not a joke. Please support the Butch Lewis Act. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Joe Zafanti. I am a past president of Teamsters Local 122 and a former shop steward for over 15 years at Anheuser-Busch, the Budweiser people. 
And I am a 33-year Teamster. I retired three years ago. And I feel that what we're looking at now is just absolutely deplorable. The fact that so many Teamsters, and not only just Teamsters, but public sector union members are also looking at the demise of their pension plans. Everyone has put their time in. They've made their donations and contributions to the pension. And when they retired, they expected their fair share to make sure that they had a life that they could enjoy. We are at a point right now where the federal government has an opportunity to step in. It wasn't a problem to take care of the car industry or the banking industries or any of the other major people that were considered too big to fail. And when I mentioned to a friend of mine that I was on my way down here, his comment was, they're too big to fail and we're too small to matter. Well, I think that it's morbidly repugnant that our country could put so many people in so much trouble. I think that we have an opportunity to help. I think we have a moral responsibility to all the people who have paid into these teams to pension plans and other pension plans. And I feel that we as a country should be pulling together to help pull us out of this problem. Thank you. Hello, I'm Joe Manchin, representing the great state of West Virginia. I'm the senior United States Senator. I was the former governor, so I know my state very well, and I love it very well, like every other representative. What we're facing with this is the greatest financial crisis the country's probably ever faced. This goes back to the recession of 2007 and 2008, and also the Depression of 1932. If this tumbles down, if we don't step up and lend a helping hand, I can assure you we will all pay a horrific price, inflation. Everything will run rampant as far as a runaway cost and crisis. People will not be able to maintain the quality of life, even maintain the substance of taking care of their family, keeping their homes, keeping a roof over their head and clothing on their back and food on the table. This is what we're dealing with. I'll give you a perfect example of the, of the mine workers in my great state of West Virginia. They have a, a, a law that was passed in 1946 called the Krug-Lewis. And it was said from that day forward, they never did ask for a handout. There's not a working person that you've listened to up until now that's asked for somebody to give them something. They've earned all that. This is money they never took home. They never enjoyed the fruits of their labor because this is money that they put aside and negotiated with that would take care of them in their later life, later years of their life, which is their pensions and which is their uh, health care benefits. So the Krug-Lewis basically said in 46, every ton of coal that was mined from that day forward, there'd be so much in that monetary value that would be set aside. And this is not going into the pay. This was going into their benefit and retirement. And it's the only plan that has a stamp approval of the federal government. But then we have so many more now with our uh, central states, uh, UPS, uh, FedEx drivers, all of our people who work so hard, all the Teamsters that have basically delivered the goods that keeps this country rolling every day. So what we're fighting for is the salvation of America as we know it, the financial um, uh, stability of this great country. But again, uh, you've heard people say, this government didn't hesitate, didn't blink an eye when the largest banks took advantage with risky investments that threw us into a recession. The United Mine Workers alone lost $2 billion in that one year of their investments in the uh, 1974 pension plan. That's in, uh, unconscionable and nothing was done. All we're asking for is the federal government to stop basically a stopgap with a loan. This is not a handout. This is not a gift. This is a loan that would be paid back First 10 years is paid back with interest, the next 30 years is paid back with principal and to be paid off. If we don't do this, if we can't make this investment in the people that made America, then who we are as a people? Why are we even here? That's what we're talking about today. That's what we're fighting for. And this is something that has to be done before November. Every day, every month, every year that we allow this to not be fixed, it adds billions and billions of dollars of more unfunded liability. So that's what we're fighting for. That's what we're asking for your support. Reach out to all of the, uh, to your Congress people on both sides of the aisle, Democrat and Republicans. We need everybody. Reach out to your senators from your state and tell them to please, please fix the pension plans of America. Thank you. My name is Doug Rumsey. I'm from Local 707. Um, we've had drastic cuts for the past three years. Um, we really need the Butch Lewis Act passed immediately. We have members that are losing their homes. OK, 
Good afternoon. My name is Mark Green. I'm part of the New York State Teamsters Pension Fund. I'm a 29-year UPS driver. Uh, we have taken benefit reductions under MPRA last year uh, of 42 to 50%. Um, and unfortunately, this is uns unsustainable. Um, severe economic impact for members of uh, the community, uh, plus uh, uh, for our community as a whole. Interestingly, my employer contributes $35,000 a year on my behalf, and I'm only seeing $100 a month in future benefit accruals. So I will talk with my, uh, I speak on behalf of my fellow coworkers that uh, it's, it's unsustainable. The, uh, the system we have in place, and we're asking for a shared responsibility approach to help, this, uh, uh, to help solve this crisis, employers, participants, and the union. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rita Lewis. I live in Westchester, Ohio, and I'm the wife of Butch Lewis, who uh, I'm humbled to say that the law was named after him. Um, he died the stress of worrying about the pension cuts. Uh, we received a letter that he was supposed to get $3,800. We were gonna be cut to 1900. And uh, the stress of that, not just worrying about us, but all of his uh, former, all of his retiree brothers and sisters, um, it kept him up at night. Um, he had an issue with his blood pressure, but it was all under control until this came about. And I asked him to walk away. And he said he couldn't because there were too many people that were counting on him. And I found him dying on the bathroom floor, New Year's Eve 2015. Um, somehow, some way, someone saw something in me and the torch was passed to me and I spoke at the Senate Finance Committee hearing and things have evolved and we have got so far in these four years that hopefully with God's grace and the work of everyone, and I mean everyone who are so gratefully involved involved. Uh, I cannot say thank you enough that we're going to get a solution. Uh, my life is never going to be the same. My husband was the love of my life. Um, is my high school sweetheart. I met him when I was 14, married at 23, uh, would have been married 42 years, but we were together 50 years. He was everything and all that I am. And no one should have to die for a pension that they worked for, they paid for, and they sacrificed for. I was mom and dad, and so were all my other retirees. They were mo mom and dad while he was on the road. And the only thing that kept us going was we knew that all the sacrifices him being gone, it was going to be worth it because we were waiting for that pension check, that $3,000, $3,500 pension check that was going to be waiting at the end of 40 years. Our employers live the millionaire's life every day by uh, the fruits of our labor. But what we did when we drug ourselves in, when we were sick, we worked the long hours, we were in the rain and the snow and unloading trailers when there was like 160 degrees, we knew that the pension was gonna be waiting for us. And then to receive that letter in the mail, we, we never had any idea it was coming. Had we known that our pension was not guaranteed as it was promised when we gave up the wages and the concessions and the vacation time, we gave all that up. Had we known that it wasn't there, we would have looked at other options, IRAs, anything like that. But we were promised, so we used that money that we probably would have put away someplace else into trying to give our kids an education. But like I said, my life has changed dramatically. It'll never be the same without my husband. I waited 40 years. I got one year with him in retirement, and he's gone, and I'm 65 years old, and I'll be alone for the rest of my life without him, and all the dreams that we had planned and shared are gone, but I'm in this too, not, not, not for me, but for my retiree family, my brothers and sisters, so that they can have the pension and live it out with their loved ones. Uh, because of the promise that we're, we were promised, we were guaranteed, and we worked for it, and we paid for it, and it wasn't a bailout, and it's not a handout. It's just doing the right thing for what we did, and we're not asking for anything other than what we worked for, and I pray that we do have a solution to that we get what we worked for, what we paid for, and we can live the rest of our life in peace because this has been going on for four years, and that's four years of our life that our retiree families are never going to get back. 
and the money that we spent, I spent about twelve or fifteen thousand dollars out of my own money, um, flying back and forth, fighting for this and fighting for this. I could have used that money for other things, and this needs to end. We only want our little pension check that we worked for all those years, and that's not asking for too much. Yeah. My name is Mike Walden. I'm a 31-year Teamster, retiring from Roadway Express. Uh, I'm in Central States Pension Fund. I have had the American dream all my life of working hard, uh, putting in all the time that I could, uh, have uh, give my employer all that's required of me, and to uh, finish up my final years of my life with dignity and self-supporting. Uh, I uh, in this pension crisis, the pension I received, also, I also received a letter from Central States Pension Fund saying my pension was going to be reduced 50%, uh, 51% plus. I don't want to rely on my family in later years. It's hard enough just becoming elderly thinking that you may end up that way with the different issues that the elderly face. But to have it come at a more rapid pace than what we expect uh, as far as possibly needing care uh, as possibly uh, if we have our pensions cut as much as they are talking about any kind of sort of self-sacrifice that may be given uh, even though our pension now we've already given self-sacrifice from inflation uh, many we've given up wages to keep our pension but I want to be self-supporting the rest of my life I want to take care of me my dignity is more important my pride is more important I don't want to have to call my children to say, I need some help. I need possibly to move in with one of you and or try and uh, maybe be put in some sort of a uh, home through Medicare, Medicaid, whatever. I don't want to rely on the government. I want to continue being self-supporting as long as I can. On the same hand, there may become a time that my children who are successful now or my nine grandchildren may need help from me. As my family helped me when I was growing up, I had to help them in their elderly years. And that's what I strive for now and the reason I want to be self-supporting. But uh, there may come a time, as we see across America more, uh, more than ever right now, that some of the elderly are adopting their grandkids. Some of the elderly are having their children move back in with them because of the economy, because of uh, catastrophic uh, re problems that are going on with not only pensions, Social Security, Medicare, whatever and it is uh, devastating you lose your self-dignity and your pride and that's what we are fighting for i not only have a concern for me uh, being a vietnam veteran and also uh, fighting for this country only to see things to be given back no fault of my own no fault of my colleagues own uh, but because of decisions made or because of uh, stock market crashes uh, just the economy itself, inflation, uh, we get a fixed income, and that fixed income, whatever it is, when we retire, that's all we get. We never get another raise. We never get cost of living. In the meantime, we've watched cars from back in the day when I bought uh, cars, 60s, 70s, when they were two, $3,000 a piece. Now they're $30,000, $40,000. You cannot buy a car on our income that we receive that uh, inflation cost of living doesn't keep up. Not only do I have a concern for my life, but the many others that I represent and fight for as I watch these devastating stories when some of these people received letters and said they, return, they could return to work, but yet they're in wheelchairs because they've lost their limbs uh, from diabetes since they retired. They've lost their eyesight since they retired. Uh, many factors can't pass physicals to go back to work, and there are virtually no jobs that we can do, and we're just too old to do some of these jobs. So we want to continue to uh, not only contribute to the economy, but to stay self-supportive. We want to, we don't want to live off of government programs, but that is, uh, when we lose money, that's uh, probably the direction that we'll go. And we need to uh, save our pensions. We need to keep our pensions. We're like, uh, it's like receiving unemployment. When you get unemployment from losing a job, which I've never collected, I've never received food stamps, I've never received any government compensation 
other than the VA from being a veteran with uh, uh, a service-connected disability, meaning Agent Orange. Um, we, I've never applied for any of those things, never wanted any of those things, but we need that money. We're just like someone losing their job and, and getting unemployment. You get that money, it goes right back in the economy 100%. We do not make enough money being retired to save. We contribute, and we contribute for all. And as, our, as we are considered, for some reason, a divided taxpayer, uh, we have to look at not only the top of the food chain, but the bottom of the food chain, and the middle from, from the middle on down to the bottom. We are the ones that spend all our money, not save our money, not buy uh, extravagant toys, things of that nature. Uh, whatever we have, we accumulated that while we were working. And now it's, it's more of a survival issue and a self-supporting issue. And uh, we need to be able to continue that, not draw out of the economy, not draw out of our government, not take money away from those who do need it. Uh, we need to continue to be self-supporting for ourselves, and I want to help the others that are in this fight also. I have a major concern for them, their grandkids, their kids, and uh, frankly, this has gone on too long. We need to get a solution now. We need to get a solution uh, uh, very quick. We, we're just wearing ourselves out, creating health problems, stress of that nature. We should be home with our grandkids, playing with them, doing things, fishing, going to car show, whatever uh, that we should be doing. We should be home maintaining our neighborhoods, visiting, contributing, volunteering like we, uh, most of us do do volunteering to our churches, our schools, our parks. Uh, we need to continue that because that is another part of society that they don't have to pay us that those do retire to keep up those, uh, those different charities, churches, schools, and parks. So moving forward, we need something to get done now. We need something to get done immediately. Let's keep the politics uh, pretty much out of it. Let's look at the humanity issue, and let's think about the national economy, how much this will draw out of the national economy, how much the national economy will lose, and uh, it would be nice to have a, a survey to see what we've been holding back and not spending, uh, anticipating what might uh, what might be a, a failure. So, anyway, okay. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Bernie Anderson. I spent 40 years in the trucking industry. I had the honor today to uh, sit alongside uh, Ken Stribling, who testified in front of the Joint Select Committee on the parameters of the devastation to retirees if this uh, multi-employer pension system isn't fixed. Over the years, we worked hard all our lives. We were, uh, were the descendants of the World War II crowd. Our pension system was started in 1955 after uh, everybody got back from the war. This is what we had worked for. The 401ks didn't start till the 80s or 90s, so we were set in stone in the multi-employer pension world. And all we ask is that we uh, get what we work for. The smaller checks that uh, most of us are get, where none of us are gonna get rich or be able to go off to Vegas, but we just want our little slice of uh, retirement pie. With the uh, multi-employer pension system uh, being in such trouble, we're all gonna need help from all our senators and congressmen. Along with that hearing, we had an unbelievable sight. We had our Republican senator Ron Johnson and our Democrat Senator Tammy Baldwin sitting side by side and introduced uh, Ken Stribling to the uh, Joint Select Committee. And that's the type of uh, bipartisanship that we're gonna need to fix this multi-employer pension system. This isn't anyone's fault. It started over the years of all the changes throughout the system in the multi-employer world to move over to defined benefit and annuities and all the other new things that are coming out. But in our world, the uh, pension plan was what we had, and that was the only thing we had. So we're looking for uh, Congress to uh, definitely fix this issue, and uh, millions of people are depending on it. So we're hoping the bipartisanship and the Joint Select Committee can get it done by the end of uh, October or November. Thank you.